Welcome to The American Dream. I'm your host, Craig Sewing. The American Dream is a show we founded based upon real estate, lifestyle, culture, and neighborhoods, showing why this country is great, going all across the country. And today, we're gonna show you some great areas and great lifestyles. Let's start the show right now. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial-free, unscripted. to American Dream. I'm your host today, Stephanie Ward. I'm down here in Historic Liberty on the Historic Liberty Square. Today they have the farmer's market going on, the businesses are open, people are out. Let me show you some of the great stuff the Square and Historic Liberty has to offer. one of my favorite shops here on the square. Bittersweet Soaps and Apothecary. Their items have been featured on HGTV. They've been in goodie bags for the American Music Awards and the Emmys. Their items are locally sourced and all ingredients come right from the area. Let's go inside and let me show you everything they have to offer. Come on. Now we're in Bittersweet. I cannot wait to introduce you to the proprietress and owner Jill McDowell. Hi, Stephanie. How are you today? I am doing great. How about you? Good. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your shop and how long you've been here today? I would love to. My business is, we've been in business for 25 years, and I say we, I'm a one-woman show. I make about 20,000 bars of soap. Wow. I specialize in natural skincare products. Um, all of my supplies that I buy for my products are all sourced locally, which is really, really important and has been for 25 years. Rather than have a thousand different, you know, products, yeah. this is an easy way to do it. And it's fun, it's exciting. So your customers can come in, test the different scents, find ones that work with their body chemistry, what they're drawn to, that and just make a personalized scent exactly. for them. Exactly, it's an amazing. Right here, all in shop. All in shop. Walk out with it today. Walk out with it Love today. Love it. So what all products can the customers make at the Scent Your Own Station? Yes, all the customers when they come in, they can make a dry oil, which is mm -hmm. our version of lotion, a liquid lotion, very intense, but not oily or anything like that. Yeah. The body spray, which is an eau de toilette or cologne, a perfume, which will be much stronger than the eau de toilette cologne, mm -hmm. or a bath salt. So oh. we have all the, those four options to be able to scent your own. What would you say some of your most popular scents in store would be? Well, I bring in 200 bars of a new soap every week. Wow. Which is kind of unheard of because it takes four to six weeks for all the soap to cure. Mm -hmm. So um, every, it's like a revolving soap door mm -hmm. you know every week we have a new soap so, so there's always something new when people come in there's all, always something new to offer well thank you jill so much for oh, letting us come in your shop it's, it's beautiful in here you can tell the quality and the love that you put into your products really shows not only does historic liberty have great shops like this to offer i cannot wait to show you one of the local homes available just a few blocks down at the home of the Andersons. I'm with Becky Anderson, the homeowner here. We're literally just blocks from downtown Liberty where all the hustle and bustle are. You can walk there, you can walk to the shops and restaurants. Hey Becky, how are you doing? Good, how about you? Good, great. Can you tell us a little bit about your historic home here? Sure, um, well you mentioned some of the best parts. The community itself is wonderful. So we're within walking distance of the square. So many great small business shops, uh, a lot of history there, but um, Actually, this was developed as the Clarity Heights um, subdivision back in the early 1900s. Wow. And the land itself was divided up before Missouri was a state. Wow. So a lot of history here yeah. and a lot of things that you wouldn't find in maybe a newer right. neighborhood. Going into an older home, you have to know what you want and what you don't want, and what you can change and what you can't. So obviously, we love the front porch. We love that limestone. We love that rock exterior. Um, but you have a a really is walls that you're working within. So we have original hardwood floors that you've kept and updated and yes. you've able to add seamless touches to just for modern living. Yeah, absolutely. This kitchen is a chef's dream. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you get a real labor of love. It can really tell you've done a lot of uh, very classic touches that don't age out as, you know, you hear over years, it just feels very fresh. Thank you so much, Becky, for letting us take a look at your beautiful home. You can tell it's really been a labor of love for yeah. you. Well, thank you for coming to a different part of Liberty and one that I hope other people will explore. 
hope you enjoyed our tour today of a little bit of what Downtown Liberty has to offer. Lots of history, lots of love, lots of the Midwest kind of way of life. I hope you're able to come out and see it in person. See you next time. Welcome to the American Dream TV, Selling Kansas City Edition. I'm your host, Carol Ross Isabelski, and today I'm going to be showing you the west side of Kansas City, Kansas, and one of the largest economic developments in the state, Village West. We're going on a behind the scenes tour of the Kansas Speedway, and then I'm going to show you one of my favorite properties in the area. I am so excited to show you my city. Let's go see. Speaking of the Kansas Speedway, today I'm here with Pat Warren, president of the Kansas Speedway. Patrick, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for being here. So tell us, how long have you been president of the Kansas Speedway? I have been president for about 11 years. Okay. When I went from being vice president of marketing for the, for the track to president uh -huh. of the Speedway, I succeeded Jeff Berger, who hired me. He was the first president here. Uh, and it was when we broke ground on the casino. Awesome. So, Do you love it? Oh, yeah, it's great. It's better than a real job. That's what I tell people. All right. Do you want to go for a ride? Yes. All right. Let's, well, let's go. Let's do it. So we're going about 80 miles an hour right now. Okay. That's less than half the speed that the teams would go when they're racing. So they get top speeds about 211 in the old car. I don't know what it is in the new car, but oh they God. cornered 165. Uh -huh. And for a frame of reference, when you take off and land at KCI in a 737 on Southwest Airlines, That's you're so going fast. 165 miles an hour. Wow. That's how fast they're going around the corners here. Oh my gosh. So how many events does the Kansas Speedway hold per year? Well, we hold, uh, you know, a number of NASCAR races. Uh, this year we're going to have six, um, wow. but we have about 250 events a year. Okay. Um, and those range anything from our, you know, again, our big race events to the American Royal World American Series Royal. of Barbecue. Yeah, American Royal mm -hmm. World Series of Barbecue um, to uh, sports car tests, driving schools, uh, business meetings, uh -huh. and sort of everything in between. So when is the next NASCAR race? Our next big race weekend is September mm -hmm. 9th through 11th. We actually have okay. a NASCAR Cup Series race on the anniversary of 9/11, uh, and so oh, that's, that's going to be a, that's going to be a big deal, and, and we certainly want to treat that date appropriately. Yeah. How many people do you expect? To attend? Uh, well, you know, we'll have probably 60 to 80 thousand people on property that day. I would uh -huh. think. You know, maybe a little bit more than that. What kind of impact has the Kansas Speedway had in Wyandotte County? Before the Speedway was here, in this entire area, there was a Kentucky Fried chicken in a gas station. You're right about uh, that. Since then, there's been, I think the number is over $5 billion of private investment, yeah. something like 7,500 jobs. Wow. Uh, you know, we've got a major league soccer stadium across yeah. the street for Sporting KC with Children's Mercy Park, but also the purely private places like Walmart that have no public sure. dollars at all and shouldn't. Uh, right. You know, they're a great asset to the community. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time yeah, and for the ride. It was so sure. exciting. I had so much fun. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. I really appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. I had so much fun today touring the Kansas Speedway. Thank you, Pat, and your team for allowing us to go on a ride on the Kansas Speedway. And now we're going to go tour an amazing Piper home. I'm going to show you one of my favorite properties. This home is in the Piper Estates neighborhood, one of the best in the area. It's only eight minutes from Village West and just a walk to Piper Schools. There are five bedrooms, four bathrooms, and almost 6,000 square feet. Let's go see. Check out this grand entrance, vaulted ceilings, gorgeous kitchen, complete with a sub-zero fridge and a beautiful open concept kitchen living. Check out this full finished basement, complete with a full bar, a home theater room, a gym, and the most amazing outdoor area. And if I lived here, this is where I would spend most of my time. I mean, look at this view. There's this gorgeous saltwater pool, a pond, and over two acres of land. Thank you for touring Kansas City, Kansas with me. I had so much fun at the Kansas Speedway and visiting this beautiful property. See you on the next episode of The American Dream. Hi, I'm Michael Hearn. And I'm James Hearn, and we're your hosts today 
for American Dream TV's Selling Kansas City. We are here today at Jasper's Italian Restaurant on Marco Polo Market, and we will be visiting with Jasper Mirable himself, and later we will be visiting our award-winning builder, NZC Homes, Nick Swazik Construction, and looking at the wonderful real estate and homes that can be built and purchased right here in Kansas City. So let's go inside and visit with Jasper, and then we'll head on out to see Nick. Let's check it out. Thank you for joining us at world-renowned and very famous, most award-winning restaurant in Kansas City, Jasper's Italian Restaurant with none other than Jasper Mirable. Thank you, Jasper, for joining us today. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. I'm honored. Thank you for all the accolades, of course. You know, many, many years, many, many awards. Let's talk about those many, many years. You have stood the test of time. Tell us about what that's like. Well, it all started back in 1954, mom and pop, and uh, 75th and Warnell. Mm -hmm. And my father purchased uh, Rose's Bar and Grill, a uh, small little restaurant, old wooden door, there's some photos up in the front when you leave. Little by little, my father was self-taught, played football in college and all that, but not in the restaurant business. That's when it all began. My father and famous Julia Child, people have eaten here in the past, and uh, even a proclamation from the Pope and from the wow. city. and. Every uh, April 1st, I go back there because that was a day this all started. Everybody used to laugh at my father because he started April 1st, 1954. And he always says now, the joke's on you, you know. I saw online that there have been a lot of celebrities that have marched through the doors of this restaurant. Well, if you look at the walls of the restaurant, you don't see photos of any uh, stars because uh, what happens at Jasper's stays at Jasper's. So uh, everybody from Tony Bennett's to Bob Hope, Ed McMahon. My mom was still in contact with Mitzi Gaynor. These people would come over to house after dinner at the restaurant. They were at Starlight or they're at the Midland or they're downtown, the, one of the arenas, you know. Well, we're here at the family table and I had to showcase some dishes that we are known for at Jasper's and dishes that you cannot miss. Capella di Angelo Alanani, angel here thin pasta with prosciutto ham, mushrooms and peas, tomato basil cream sauce, it's a must. And here's that dish I told you about, scampi a la Levernaise. Shrimp in a cream sauce with sherry wine and lemon. You grab the bread. I think the sauce is better than the shrimp itself. What has kept you in Kansas City and not expanding across the country? This is enough for four members of the family to work 70 hours a week. When I tell you 70 hours a week, that's the honest to God's truth. Oh, I have no doubt. So thank you again, Jasper. We appreciate you so much T taking the time with us uh, today. Thank you. As my father always said, Betty Majada Benny, it means eat and drink well. And I love it. Thank you, sir. Grazie mille. Uh -huh. So here we are, guys. Here's the home. I'm sent here next with Wes Bame, a superintendent for NZC Custom Homes. So Wes, tell me, you know, uh, what, se what separates NZC Custom Homes from other builders? Uh, to me, really, it's just that we treat each one of these houses like it's one of our own houses, like we're building it for ourselves. We all kind of take personal experiences, stuff we like, stuff we don't like, um, you know, places we've been, and we try to input that on each house. So, you know, whether that's changing, you know, some tile or changing the appliances or whatever, it's, it's, it's something that's personal to us, and I think that reflects in the house. Thank you so much for joining us for this sneak peek at NZC Homes. Kansas City is your place to come visit and hopefully live. We are your lifestyle and real estate experts. Welcome to American Dream. This week we're kicking off another season. This time we're selling Kansas City. Go Chiefs. Today, we're in Lee Summit, Missouri. We're actually at Longview Farm. I'm Mark Wiesman. I'm your host this week of The American Dream. R.A. 
Long built this farm back in the early 1900s. He built over 50 buildings out here, but the crown jewel was the Longview Mansion. The mansion is massive, 2,200 square feet. There's over 48 rooms. And the cool part is in 2018, a company named Sunflower Development took, bought the property and they've renovated it. We're gonna take a tour of the mansion. We're gonna talk to uh, the manager of the property. And then we also have a local resident that knows a lot about the history. Let's step inside. I'm here with Lynn Yeldell. She's the local historian for the, the Longview Mansion. We're gonna let her walk us through this historic building. This is the uh, library and living room. That's how it was used by uh, the Combs family, Lula Long Combs and her husband, Pryor Combs. So this was a very central room here uh, to the family. This is the master bedroom. That's the first purpose uh, of the room. And uh, Lula and her husband, Pryor, uh, slept in this room. And then Pryor uh, became ill. Uh, he had Parkinson's for the last 16 years of his life. So uh, Lula turned this into a dog room, a pet room. And she had 23 dogs in this room, but we also had a pig in this room, <laughs> one or another one of her pets, until that pig got just too big and then had to go to the barn. And then last but not least, she had two skunks in this room. So this was our pet room. I'm here with Heather Brewster. She's the current general manager of the Longview Mansion. And I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about what the space is being used for right now. Sure, thank you. Uh, in 2018, Sunflower Development Group purchased the mansion um, and did a $3.2 million renovation, which is everything that you've been able to see. Uh, we operate as a special event venue. Majority of our events are weddings. Now that we're in a spot to be able to, to, to give back to the community the way we want to, uh, it's just my greatest joy. Another crown jewel of the Longview Farm that R.L. Long built was this show horse barn because his daughter Lula Long was a champion horse rider. He built this thing specifically for her. It is still amazing inside. And as you can see in 2005, the school district adopted the building and it is now an elementary school for the school district. So we're now in the library for the school. As you can see, they have the original beams left in this area. Then down here, this is where the, her championship horse had its quarters. We're now in the arena, which is simply amazing. The school has done a really good job of keeping the architecture. They appropriately named their mascot the Stallion, which makes sense since we're in a horse arena. But the cool thing is, is they kept the stalls and a lot of the architecture from the old arena. They also kept the cupola up here in the ceiling. Uh, it's just an amazing piece of history that they were able to preserve. The Longview Farm, not only was it big, but it was historic. R.A. Long's vision was to have a self-sustaining community. In total, there were over 50 buildings here that they built in a span of 18 months. I hope you'd enjoyed the look kind of behind the scenes of the Longview Farms. A little bit of the history, I would encourage you to, to delve into it a little bit more and just see what an incredible family this was. Thanks for joining. Welcome to the legends at Village West in Kansas City. This place has grown so much over the last 15 years, but tonight we're gonna to go into Dave & Buster's and check out what's going on with Kansas City Cornhole. I think now per capita, Kansas City is the largest cornhole market 
in the U.S. I've been a pro for this is my fourth year now, and I'm currently ranked 21 in the world. In a month, I probably travel to, I'd say, seven different cities and do probably seven or eight different events. Hey, I found John Quintez also throwing some bags, getting ready for this big blind draw. Um, he's been a pro for three years now. I actually started uh, at a wiffle ball league in Parsons, Kansas. We used to, on the side of the field, there'd be boards set up, and uh, we'd go over there and practice against this old guy that was the best, and eventually we started playing like him, and then that was about 17 years ago. And now we, uh, yeah, and then most people didn't even know it existed back then. Yeah. But uh, now we, uh, after that, we set up our own boards, started playing a lot, and then about three years ago, it kind of blew up. and. Yeah, yeah, I got real serious, and now we just travel a lot. It's, fun, yeah. Yeah. it's amazing how people can get good so quick, you know? Yeah. Like if somebody started, like, in their backyard, and then six months later, they could be playing in some pretty major tournaments. Yeah, little so, kids and everything. Yeah, anybody can play. Well, good luck tonight. Hope you win some good money. Absolutely. We've been seeing an increase of uh, guests come into our building, and, you know, uh, certainly, uh, more interest in cornhole itself. We really found that we had all the pieces necessary uh, to pair up with the Dave and & Busters and our other venues to really make this thing pop. Look who I found in the cornhole room practicing. Of course, it's Alex Hicks and Kyle Hutley. Um, I have a couple questions for Alex. This guy is number 10 in the world. That is crazy. He's one of my very favorite cornhole players. How did you get started in cornhole? This guy right here, my pro partner Kyle Hutley, got me into it. Yeah, uh, we started playing in his family's yard with his family, and uh, you know we just kind of started traveling a little bit. And the more and more we went, found the regional tournaments, conferences, and they led to nationals, and then they led to our pro cards. So tell me a little bit about like what all you've accomplished during your I've got, career. I was first in the Midwest Conference last year, and then first in the state. Um, I won three opens this year, and I'm a pro. Wow, that is crazy amazing. That's awesome. What are your future goals here pretty soon? I want to win Worlds coming up. Oh, that's awesome. Is that in South Carolina, right? Yep. Well, thanks for um, talking to us, guys. It was really fun to yeah. talk to you, and I look forward to tonight's big blind draw, and hopefully you'll win some big money. Me too. Okay? Thank you. Sponsorships as well. Lisa and Ryan have been with Bear Creek since the beginning, and they are making tonight uh, some donations based upon a couple transactions. Lisa Reese is the best. Let's go. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We learned a lot about Clear Creek Cornhole in Kansas City and how much it's growing, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time. Welcome to the American Dream TV, Selling Kansas City. I'm the host, Jonathan Goforth, with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. And these are the uh, real estate agents on my team. So Selling Kansas City is about lifestyle, real estate, and living the American Dream. Today we're gonna introduce Kevin and Amalia Nielsen. This is their amazing 7,000 square foot home. And we're gonna show that to you today. I bet you're curious. What do they do for a living? How do people afford multi-million dollar homes like this? Well, today, you're gonna find out. So I wanna thank you both for allowing us to come in, film your home. This home is custom designed. I know you guys have spent a long time, a couple of years designing this, picking out everything. I know everything in here is very high-end, very customized. Tell us a couple of your favorite things about your home. Okay, well, I love the kitchen because it's very spacious. We have a lot of cabinet space. The countertop is spaceful, so we can entertain family. Um, the lighting is uh, really pretty, I like it. We have, uh, my favorite chandelier, I think, is the one in the staircase. It's uh, called Teardrop. Yeah. The light fixture so is, is beautiful. 
So with your kitchen, not only is the main kitchen huge, but you have a butler's pantry. That's right, yes. So. Uh, that's another great thing about this kitchen because uh, if I'm cooking and I want to keep this area all nice looking, so I can just be in the back preparing stuff and the, the houses still look nice. Yes, so. great for entertaining. Great for entertaining, yes. So when I'm driving around and I see these huge multi-million dollar homes, I'm curious, what do these people do for a living? And so I've enjoyed watching your business explode and seeing your huge success, especially when you're in your 30s. So I wanna ask, take us back to the beginning. What do you do? Yeah, so I grew up on a cattle farm just south of Topeka. My parents are very hard workers and at a young age they instilled work ethic into us. And in 2005, I was able to move to Kansas City and um, I started work for a utility locating company and I really fell in love with the industry. And in 2008, I was fortunate enough to start my own business with my uh, with, with a business partner. And, um, and it's really just, it has exploded and grown and we were able to build our dream home on property out here um, in Johnson County. I know when you built this and you custom designed all this and you built your office into this because you're a, you're a hunter. Yep. And so in addition to the office being probably your favorite room in here, uh, tell us about this simulator. So when we were building, uh, we were looking at many different options of home theater or, or other entertainment areas, but we we saw the, the simulator, the interactive simulator that had golf and soccer, and, and we decided to go with that, and it's really brought our family a ton of joy and um, our friends a lot of joy, and we spend a lot of time down here, uh, whether it's with, with our little family or with a lot of our friends, and it's it's been a lot of fun to have. So would it be okay if we get the whole team of realtors in here and we uh, play some golf? Well, I like competition, so. Uh, so let's do a competition. <laughs> So after a few rounds of everybody on the real estate team playing golf, we've narrowed it down to the two best. So we have Donald Fromberger and of course Kevin, but out of the two, we made a little bet and whoever lost between the two gets thrown in the pool. <laughs> so Kevin, I'm really sorry, oh, but man. <laughs> you just didn't win. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's take him out to the pool. <laughs> Selling Kansas City is so much more than just real estate. It's about having fun. It's about lifestyle here in the Midwest. Thank you, Kevin and Amalia, for inviting us into your home to allow us to film today. Absolutely, it was, it was our pleasure. We had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, it's such a neat opportunity. Yeah, it was great. Well, it's been an honor for me, Jonathan Goforth, to be the host of the episode today. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The American Dream TV. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of The American Dream. Again, I was your host, Craig Sewing, and the creator of the show. Thank you for following our show, and don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll catch you next time. And, of course, cheers to your American dream.